Digital images are all around us, on our digital cameras, on our phones, on Facebook, in newspapers, magazines, like this picture of Penelope Cruz. Now, she's a very beautiful lady, but she's not that perfect. This is an example of the famous photoshopping. Here you have an album cover of the Rolling Stones. Is there something going on? Well, on the right you can see the original picture taken in 1978, where the fifth member of the Rolling Stones, Bill Wyman, is still present. So they carefully wiped him out as he left the group. Now, things become a bit more dangerous when digital images are being used in the news. This photo was front page news all over the world in July 2008. It demonstrates a successful test missile launch. Well, did it? In reality, the third one did not go off, and they just shamelessly copied the fumes from the top and the bottom right. So now you might wonder, can we automatically detect whether such changes uh, were applied to digital images. Well, this is, amongst others, what we investigate within our multimedia forensics team. We play our daily episode of CSI Multimedia. <laughs> I created the team back in 2008, when I moved from the math department to the electronics and informatics department of the VUB. I wanted to use my math background in a more tangible way to see how we have to dive deeper into a digital image. So, a picture of a cat. Let's zoom in into the eye. So you can see the pixels appearing of which the photo is built up from. Now, on your computer, this is seen as a big array of numbers where the numbers represent the colors of the pixels on your screen. But once an image is translated into numbers, we can do mathematical computations to find answers to the forensic questions we might have. We can look for patterns, irregularities, additions, and changes. Now, changes do not always have to be visible. Do you see the same image on the left as on the right? It seems so, but let us turn to their matrix of numbers. In the image on the right, I made small changes to those numbers that reflect in color changes that are barely noticeable by the naked eye. But if we have different numbers, then if we do the same computations, we will get a different outcome. In this way, I was able to hide a complete cat in the right image. Now, in the image on the left, you can see that there is something going on in the top. This means that the original picture that I took from the VUB website was already slightly edited. Now, the technique I applied on the right is called digital watermarking. And we don't use it to hide cats in images. Uh, we use it to protect copyright and to trace illegal content. Did you know that each time you watch a movie in a digital cinema, a digital watermark is being put into the movie, pointing towards the room, date, and time of playback? In this way, when a movie circulates on an illegal download network, we can trace back which cinema did not provide adequate security during playback. And as each camera has a specific sensor noise, we can even detect who did the filming. So be aware, because filming is not allowed. <laughs> now, digital cinema brings me seamlessly to this lady, Ingrid Tobushi, a famous mathematician from the VUB. Now, she became world famous because of her Tobushi wavelets. They were elected as one of the best Belgian inventions. Now, the wavelets are a specific mathematical computation that you can apply to digital images. And they are being used by the FBI to compress their fingerprint database 
and they also lie at the basis of the digital cinema video format, the JPEG 2000, which was co-developed by our department. Now, Ingrid is always looking for new and exciting applications of mathematics. And in 2008, her love for art drove her to use wavelets to investigate paintings through their digital high-resolution scans. And it turns out that a specific family of wavelets are perfectly suited to capture those geometrical structures you have in the thick layers of paint here in the Starry Night painting of Van Gogh. This technique allows us to distinguish fake from real Van Goghs and also to date uh, his paintings in time. Now, when she heard in 2008 that I also moved from the math department to image processing, she asked me whether I wanted to cooperate and jumpstart this exciting new field in Belgium. So that's when I started cooperating with the Royal Museum of Fine Arts here in Brussels, just up the hill, where there's currently an exhibition going on about our work together. In 2009, we got the opportunity to work on this famous painting, the Ghent altarpiece of the Van Eyck brothers. Here you can see the painting closed. Now, we were asked by art historians, uh, the group of Max Martens from Ghent University, whether we as image processors could help with a mystery that has been puzzling art historians for years. It's about the right upper panel, the Annunciation of Mary. There is a little book, it's just a couple of square centimeters big, and art historians have been wondering whether some real text is depicted. Now, if we take a closer look, you can see that on the high resolution scan, the cracks in the paint are very prominent, and they really hamper reading of the text. So we developed mathematical algorithms that can automatically grasp these cracked textures. This is the result. Then we applied it to the whole book. This is what we get. And this was used as input for my colleagues from Ghent University, the team of Alexandra Pizzurica, to digitally restore the book. This indeed helped the art historians uh, group to identify a couple of words in the text, which led them to a manuscript of Thomas de Aquino out of 1430. Now, when you know that the painting was finished in 1432, it's indeed very likely that this is where the book is referring to. Now, crack detection can do more. If we look at deviations in those crack patterns, it aids restorers to look for zones for where overpaintings or earlier retouchings were applied. But we can even take digital painting analysis a step further. You might all know the painting because of its famous robbery of the lower uh, right panels, and the panel of the just judges is still missing. It was stolen in 1934, and what you see here is a copy made by Chef van der Veken in 1945. Now, he did a very good job, but let us take a closer look. On the right, you can see a piece that I took from the middle panel, which is, of course, aged more than van der Veke's copy. But you can immediately see that Chef did a very good job in imitating churches and patches of grass. But if we take a closer look to faces and jewelry, then you can see that the Van Eyck brothers were indeed the real masters of reality. So we have set ourselves a crazy goal. We would like to Van Eyckify this stolen panel before the actual panel is found. Now, this is just a grasp of topics that we investigate within our team. And I think that I can conclude now that a digital image indeed says more than a thousand words, but it speaks in mathematics. <laughs>